Hi, David from Electric Teaching here. Um, this lesson is part two of trying to solve for quadratic equations when you have imaginary solutions. So we started off with a simple x squared plus 4 equals 0, talked about how there are no real intersections on the real number line. We practiced simplifying a few and uh, to get ready to apply them again to solving quadratic situations. So let's get into it. This one's 4x squared plus 1. As always, I want to remind my students that um, the, think of the graph. If you can always think of the graph of this idea, what we're looking at is simply a parabola, a thin parabola up 1. A thin parabola up 1. So again, if we're trying to figure out where that equals 0, there are no real solutions. So without diving into the algebra, I have I already anticipate the fact that we're going to have imaginary solutions, or I'm going to be I will be using I in my answer basically. Solving for um, x squared here, solving for x squared, I'm going to subtract one. I'm going to subtract one, and then divide by four, and I should get x by its close to by itself. The last step there, I think, will be plus or minus the square root. So I'm showing my steps over here on the right, not to clutter it up over here on the left. So again, the first step it says, I'm going to subtract 1. I'm going to get 4x squared equal to, whoops, excuse me, equal to negative 1, equal to negative 1. Then I will divide by 4 on both sides. So if I divide by 4 here, it cancels, makes a 1. And over on the other side, you can see I'm going to have negative 1. Whoops, excuse me. I said negative 1. Didn't write that though, pardon me. So negative 1 divided by 4, or negative 1 fourth. So if I take the square root for my last step here, it's going to be square root of a negative here. So x equals plus or minus, plus or minus, whenever you take the square root, it's not the principal square root as discussed before, it is me taking a square root of a negative 1 fourth. Um, now let's uh, simplify this one, simplify this one. So when you have this one simplified, I'm just bring it over here and use the space here. I want you to think about how this is plus or minus and break up all the multiplied, and in this case, dividing factors. So you really have a negative 1 and a square root, and then you really have this multiplied to a square root of a 1 over a square root of a 4. Again, as long as there's no adding or subtracting here, and as long as we're multiplying, and in a sense, this is negative 1 times 1 fourth. This is negative 1 still times 1 fourth and a big square root. But I can look at the square roots of each one. And again, I have to emphasize, because we're not adding and subtracting, because later you may get in the habit of doing that then, which will be incorrect. We know this is an i. We know this is i. We know the square root of 1. And we know the square root of 4. So you can see then this simplifies nicely to a plus or minus um, 1 half i. Again, I want to put the i term in the back. I want to put the i term last. Um, let's solve another one. Let me set up just one more. Oh, I have one set up already perfectly. Again, think of a parabola, a thin parabola. That's what the 3 multiplier will do is make it a bit thinner. It wants to put a stretch on it in the vertical. And it's raised up 2. And you can imagine, I don't need to graph this, it's never going to hit the y equal negative 62 line. So you can see already that we're going to have imaginary solutions for this one. We're not going to have real solutions. Solving again for x. Solving again for x. I'm going to again show my steps. I can see I'm going to subtract the 2. I always tell my students to see what's happening to the x and then undo it backwards. For instance, the order of operations says you should square it, multiply it, and add. So there I'm going to subtract, undo the divide, the multiply by 3 by a divide by 3. This time I'll show it in a fraction form slash 3, so that's what I'm going to do. And then the last step, again, will be plus or minus the square root. Plus or minus the square root. You can see I'm not cluttering up the, the um, this side of the equation. It works out a little bit nicer here. All right, let's get into it. If I subtract 2, we're going to get 3x squared equal negative 64. Again, minus 2 takes it further back, so negatives further back on the number line. 
negative 62 minus 2, negative 64. Divide by 3. If I divide by 3 on this side, there'll be just x squared. It'll cancel. Over here, if I am dividing by 3, I think 3 will go into this. Will 3 go into this? I don't think so. So I, let's just rewrite it. How do I know if 3 goes into it? Neat tricks that I hope you might have learned in maybe middle school or somewhere. If you add up these digits and they are not a multiple of 3, then 3 will not go into it evenly. So there's no reason to try long dividing and, and getting with a remainder. So let's leave it just like this. And the last step then, x is equal to plus or minus, plus or minus the square root of the fraction 64 over 3. 64 over 3. Again, I want to bring it up over here and use this space over here. So we have now um, x equal. I'm going to break this up. Whoops, sorry about that. Square root of the square root of top and bottom. Again, we can break that radical up, that square root symbol, the radical up. Okay, um, as long as we're multiplying or dividing all the factors you're breaking it up on. And so in this case, I'm the factor of 64 on top and a root 3 on the bottom and do not forget we still have the square root of negative 1 which will become our i so i just put the negative oops i lost the negative down there hopefully you saw that and were hopefully reminding me through the video silly as that sounds okay and let's see what we got plus or minus an 8 over square root of 3, which I do not have an exact answer to, so we leave it in root 3 and call it a root 3. And then again, i. So we have our i term. Um, a lot of uh, teachers will insist that you um, rationalize the denominator, multiply by root 3 over root 3, which is a form of 1 that gets rid of the radical in the denominator. I'm not doing that lesson right now, so I'm going to box it and walk away. I know some math teachers would be a little bit irked by that, but I want to keep my timeline and get this, uh, get one more neat example out in the idea of just solving and having imaginary solutions. This one, I'm going to do um, x squared minus 2x plus 6 equals 0 bit hard to visualize whether or not this hits the x-intercept so therefore has real solutions so this one's just a little bit hard to, to to visualize that and most importantly and this is really important for these doing these um, quadratic solutions finding these quadratic solutions is that when you have this linear term in a quadratic equation this is the quadratic term that's the most powerful term, the highest degree. So this is the, that's why it's called a quadratic equation. When you have this linear term, you must make sure this is set equal to zero, okay? And try to factor first, but there's no way factors of six are gonna add to two. So that's a little trick that I teach my students. So that means I'm stuck to either completing the square or the quadratic formula. For this example, I'm gonna do the quadratic formula Hopefully you remember it to be negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And uh, I'm, gonna, I'm not teaching that right now. I just want to apply that to see what happens in the imaginary solution. So forgive me if I go through this quick. But negative of b, so 2 plus or minus the square root. By the way, we always have plus or minus the square root in these quadratics, huh? See? And then we're going to have plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 4. That's negative 2 squared, so that's negative, negative, 2, 2, both. That'll be positive 4. Minus 4 times the a, which is 1, and the c, which is 6. The c, which is 6. You can already see this can be a negative answer, which means a negative discriminant. And therefore, we're going to have no real solutions, but only imaginary solutions. All over 2 times a or 2 times 1. Again, I'm not teaching this, I'm just using this as an example. So 2 plus or minus, this is negative 24 and a positive 4, so square root of negative 20 all over 2. 
We're going to simplify this. I'm going to distribute the denominator. Remember, this is, this is really, in a, if you think about it, I'm multiplying by a half. If you think about it, I'm multiplying by a half when you divide by 2. So if I'm going to do that to both of them, it'll be 2 over 2, distributing the denominator, plus or minus the square root of, in fact, let's go ahead and break that up, negative 1, there's the negative, the square root of 4, and the square root of 5. Double check my math. Does that make it negative 20? It sure does. All right, almost done. x equals for this one, 1 plus or minus the square root, well, there's an i, the square root of negative 1, so there's an i, a root 5, and this is 2. So I'm going to do a little cancellation. I hope you understand cancellation because it's essential for this class and future classes. If that's 2 and this is 2 and we're all multiplying, we're not adding or subtracting, that's like having a big 1 right there. So you can cancel them and make them a 1. Then all you have left is the root 5, the root 5 times the i. So this is another example of how you use quadratic solutions, except this time a uh, quadratic with a linear term compared to the other ones where we did not have linear terms. And I can just do what I call basic algebra compared to what I call quadratic algebra where you have to set it equal to zero and take some choices. I'm David from Electric Teaching. I hope that this has helped.